Hello and welcome everyone. So in this video we are going to understand data models and query languages from data intensive application. So this chapter will majorly cover differences between relational and non-relational models and different query languages used. So let us first understand what is a data model. It's an abstract mod model which helps us to define the logical structure of how the data is organized into the database and what are the different relations between those data. So it emphasizes on what data is needed and how it should be organized instead of what operations need to be performed on the data. So how the data models and abstractions are related. So we all know that most applications are built by layering one data model on the top of another. So if we look at the real world, there are people's organizations, etc., which are which is modeled in terms of objects or data structures or APIs, which helps to manipulate these data structures. So these data structures in DB, how they are stored? They are stored in form of JSONs or XMLs or tables in relational databases. And these data structures are represented in terms of bytes in memories or disk. And then these are represented in hardware layer in forms of electric currents and magnetic fields. So data model helps us to define an abstract model for the database. So what are the different data models used for data storage and querying? We'll look in, into the relational models and non-relational models in this video. So let us first understand what are the relational models. So relational models helps us to organize the data into relations called tables and each relation is an unordered collection of tuples and rows. So let us see by this example. Here a customer places an order and an order has multiple items and that item is defined by a product which is manufactured by a manufacturer. So the order table has a customer ID which is the foreign key in this order table and it references the primary key of the customer table. Similarly, order ID and product ID combination is the primary key of the order items table and product ID is the foreign key which references the primary key of the product table. So relational model is a schema on write model where the schema is explicit and the database ensures that the data conforms to it. So basically it's kind of static compile time checking where we cannot change the schema as per our need and it has to be predefined when we are defining the structure of the database. Let us take an example where we have to find out all the items ordered by a customer. So we'll select the data which is needed to us and we'll join customer table with order table, order table with order items table and order item table with product table to find out the product and name and quantity. So that's how a query in uh, relational looks like. So now let us understand how the NoSQL works. NoSQL allows unstructured data. So they do not fo follow any schema validation in the database. Basically we can add any number of keys and values to the database and the database does not conform to it. So it is generally considered that NoSQL are schema-less databases, but that's misleading because though the database do not follow any structure, but our code generally follows a structure and that's why it follows schema on read uh, schema on read and it's a dynamic type checking no sql databases can be document based graph databases key value pairs or wide column stores so now let's take the previous example where we are storing the information of customer in a document and the information of orders in a separate document which stores the items and the customer ID which points which customer has placed the order. Let's deep dive into relational models more. So our application generally uses object oriented programming languages to for coding and we have to generally write a translation layer to map the objects in the application layer to the models in the databases and that disconnect between the objects in application code and database models is called impedance mismatch which can be a disadvantage in relational models. Relational models also allows us to have a lot of joins to find out even a little bit of information. And relational model, uh, in relational model, it's the query optimizer which decides which part of the query is to execute and in which order and which indexes to use and which join methods to use. Let's now talk about NoSQL more. So NoSQL has a better storage locality. So in the cases where 
we have to load the document entire at once no sql can be beneficial because when we store data into multiple tables we might require more index lookups and more disk seeks which can be a slower operations now no sql does not provide as the join options we have to emulate the joins in the application code so let us take the previous example in this example if we have to find a uh, all the um, all the locations where black tv is sold out then we have to find out all the orders where the black tv was sold out and we have to join it with customer tape customer document in the application layer so joins can be weak in no sql and in no sql it is difficult to refer to the nested item directly let's see which is better then in most of the cases none is better because it totally depends upon your application needs how you want to store the data what data you want to store and how you want the processing so let us take some examples where we can find out which can be better in various cases so if our data has one to many relationships where a tree can be loaded at once then the document structure is better so let's take an example where a resume can be uh, stored in a nosql database because resume generally has to be shown at a single time where all the details like education and work experience has to be appeared on the website at once so in that cases document structure can be better but in uh, if the data has relationships like many to many then in that case uh, no uh, no sql would not be better because we have to emulate the joins in the application code the second point is where the relational technique of shredding that is creating the multiple documents into multiple tables can lead to cumbersome schemas so as we saw that in our previous example when we have to find out all the tv which were bought by uh, which were bought in a particular location led to the joins in the table and we were maintaining multiple documents for customers and orders because they are different entities in that case document structure can be difficult the third case where we have at a later stage alter the structure of the uh, data so for example you are currently storing the customer name first name and last name into the single column and you have to now partition these two uh, first name and last name into separate um, entities in the uh, no sql databases it is easy to start st uh, start saving first name and last name because you have to just start adding a new key but in case of relational databases you have to alter your database by adding a column and you have to migrate and do some pre processing so it totally depends uh, upon your data needs upon your application needs which can be better now let's see what are the different query languages used for data so we'll cover declarative and imperative languages declarative languages specify the pattern of the data what conditions we want and how we want the data in sorted format in aggregated format so specifically we specify the transformations but we do not specify how we want to achieve that goal whereas in imperative we tell the computer to perform certain operations in a certain order if we see the example sql is a declarative language so if we have a set of animals and we have to find out all the sharks family we'll just specify a query select star from animals where family equal to sharks but in case of imperative will specify more of the code and will specify the instructions how to find out the sharks family so declarative languages can parallelly execute whereas it is difficult to parallelly execute in imperative because it specifies the instructions to be executed in a particular order and in the declarative languages it is up to the data optimizer to decide which indexes to use which join methods to use so declarative languages does not only happens in databases uh, web browsers uh, languages also follow a declarative pattern so for example we have a web page where sharks whales and fishes are sub pages of it so when a user opens the sharks page this list item gets selected 
its style gets changed so if in future we want to change the background color of the selected page to blue we'll just specify an element li dot selected where the background color is blue but if we have to do the same thing in an imperative language it can be a little bit difficult because if you try to do it in javascript which is an imperative language we have to select all the elements which has the tag name li and we have to find the children's of it which has a tag name p and change its background color so the code is simpler in declarative language whereas it can be difficult in imperative languages so now let's move into our final topic graph like data models graph has vertices which are the nodes or entities and it has edges which represents the relationship between those nodes so let's take some examples like the social graphs for example facebook where the user has a friends and there is a relation between multiple users web graphs and roads or rail networks so let us take an example where john is friends with kate and john post a post on fb kate comes and likes the john post and comment on his post whereas john likes the kate's comment so it's a social graph which helps us to understand the relation between multiple entities that entities do not need to be homogeneous that can be heterogeneous so graph like structure can help us to represent the relationship between heterogeneous entities and it can be quite complex which helps us to understand the relationship between various entities so now uh, let's summarize what we have covered in this video relational models document based models graph mod models and we have understood what in various cases which model can be useful and we have understood the declarative languages and the imperative languages i hope you like the video and the content thank you